Hey guys, sitting out here in the July, about to get into the August checklist, do a little recap of our July, um, what we got accomplished. We got the uh, Swisher Rough Cut all, uh, all through our trails, got all that knocked down along with our food pots, and then we got our workhorse sprayer out and uh, sprayed all of our food pot areas and ended up killing a lot of the vegetation as you guys can see behind, and we'll be ready to rock and roll come food pot season there um, in August. Uh, what I will touch a little bit on our food pot strategy. We use a, a, a Braska blend, um, a couple different versions from Analogic. These are brand new products this year, but in the past what I've always done is I'll plant these food pots in that Braskas and then and, uh, and I'll have those done about mid mid August, get all that stuff established, and then I'll come back in in mid to late September and then again in mid to late October with winter rye and I'll broadcast that over all these food pots and what that does is it provides a really good food pot all the way uh, from the very beginning of hunting season all the way to the end of hunting season on into your spring months um, so those uh you know these brassica products are, are a great way to get those deer into these food pots whether you're using for a big a, you know, a large three or four acre food pot or you're using them for a uh, staging or kill pot you know these are definitely great products to be uh, looking into um the other thing you know that we'll be doing here i uh, did bring this tree stand but i won't be hanging it today um is putting our millennium tree stands and then we're also we've been moving some of our redneck uh, blinds around both the fiberglass and the ghillie blinds and I've got one I'm really excited about hunting in this year with the north wind. Um, it's overlooking a trail system that we've got numerous mature bucks last year uh, moving up and down on our tail link system. So I really look forward to uh, getting in at the right time for, for that. Um, but as you guys do get into your uh, tree stand locations, uh, definitely look and make sure you know your shooting lanes are established. Um, and then another thing is, is uh, verify that your entry and exit route, you know, is is pretty rock solid, and you know these may be adjusted throughout the uh, throughout the season. You know, deer tend to, uh, you know, they, they do the path of least resistance until that tree falls over, you know, and they can't get through, so they're going to maybe go a different direction, or maybe you've hunted in that location too much, and they're trying to skirt that location, you know. So, as you guys do look into your hunt locations, uh, look at your entry and exit routes first. And you know, I was up there in Kansas last weekend, putting some trail cameras out, spraying some food pots, and I did a, uh, <clears throat> um, I did get, get the opportunity to go across one of our creeks there. And that particular tree stand, I actually dump, uh, jump in a couple ditches, and then once I get to that creek, I, I'm able to cross that creek in a lot of the low areas, and then I'm able to get into another ditch area, and then I'm able to get right up within about 15 feet of my tree stand. So extremely limited um, you know scent uh, that's going th through there and haven't hardly uh, pushed a deer out for 10 years um, you know with that with that uh, entry and exit um, you know so it's just been a, a proven uh, fact for myself you know to use those creeks those ditches you know water sources you know if you're able to, if you're hunting the lake you know use a boat um, you know kayak canoe you know river creeks um, you know just kind of look at that stuff um, you know and if you're hunting big agriculture fields if you got corn stalks you know use those things as your advantage if you don't have those and you're able to get in there with some switch grass you know earlier in the year uh, definitely look into that stuff um, it's it works out very well i've got several redneck uh, blinds that i've got that uh, that that i go in and out of on some food plots uh, that i'm able to leave a lot of times in the evening times and not even bump out any deer so, you know, that stuff works out very well. Um, we are getting into the, uh, you know, shooting the, our bows a little bit uh, more. Um, last time I had my bow out, um, I did figure out that my bow, uh, my loop on my string needed to get replaced. So um, I'm getting that done here in the next couple of days. Uh, so, you know, definitely overlook those bows, uh, crossbows. You know, if you're able to get your rifle out there and shoot them a little bit. You know, make sure that you're still feeling comfortable with those weapons. There's always, a, you know, a good time uh, to do so. Um, you know, then we're getting into the scouting aspect. You know, 
if, if I find a nice cool uh, cool even there uh, me and the family we're jumping in either UTV or one of the vehicles and we'll drive out and use the vortex fogging scope you know with the binoculars and watch over our bean, our bean fields or some of the big clover plots that we got to those actually our groups of bucks are coming in into and just to get all around time uh, to get out there um, you know one of the biggest uh, scouting tools that I've started to use uh, for the last three years is cellular cameras. Um, our go-to camera now and has been for the last uh, I think two, two and a half years is this Cuddy Back Cuddy Link uh, system here and uh, what they've got is they've got a home camera for you and this is the one that's going to have a, a cellular plan and this is a K unit uh, but they don't they no longer have this particular model they use a G uh, home camera and just make sure when you buy these that you get one home camera that has a cellular um, subscription there AT&T or Verizon and then after that you're able to get 23 more cameras onto this system so some of my bigger thousand acre pieces um, I'm, I'm running uh, two to three systems per piece of property and what these are doing and they're 24 cameras a system so you can do the math there I've got a lot of cellular cameras running and uh, they do the trick um, you know we have killed some big deer uh, you know some yeah. some that have been uh, on us the whole year and some of them moved in that 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 uh, that morning or that evening prior to we went in there and, and they was able to harvest them you know that next morning but this is the uh, the J uh, camera it's a rem remote camera they also have a G remote camera um, both run on uh, D batteries and you're also able to get the 6D booster pack there um, you know the biggest deal is this is going to be your cheaper model and then you also have the J or sorry the G camera that's going to have more LED lights. Um, I run with the black flash cameras. These cameras uh, on the J, they've got infrared or black flash. And then on your G series, you've actually, you're able to uh, take your flash out and replace it. Um, and you're able to get a strobe, which would be your, your normal, you know, really uh, impressive K-Link camera that they're known for those pictures. And then you've still got your IR to your infrared and then your black flash. Um, I'm a big black black flash advocate. Um, I don't want anything in the uh, uh, in the woods, you know, that's gonna show those deer or anything out in nature. Uh, or, so, personally, I'm a big you know a big advocate of the black flash. But they're all great cameras, and uh, you know really work out well. So, locations that I'm putting these things on. Um, there's trail systems, mock scrapes, and then water right now. And on these cameras, is the way it works is you've got your home camera and try to get these things in a centralized loca location throughout that piece of property you're going to establish these on and then start setting your remote cameras. And what happens is this remote camera is going to connect back to this home camera. And that home camera is what sends your pictures. So as this camera transmits to here, this your your second remote camera may be further out and it may link through this camera back to your home but it may also be close enough for that second camera to link directly back to that home as, as well so definitely keep that in mind when you're establishing these get that home camera um, on a 6d booster pack that way you can just set these things and and forget them you're going to get pictures um, throughout the entire day and you're going to know basically every single deer that's moving through there when they're moving through there and you know should give you a really good idea of ability to get in there and uh, harvest those deer so the last item um, is, is water holes um, you know I'm not uh, I don't need a lot of the water holes uh, really I don't I don't have any in Missouri um, just for the simple aspect that we just have such a tremendous amount of water when it comes to ponds uh, and creeks that we just, uh, I just don't feel like I need them. Uh, so I do hunt over a lot of water uh, throughout the entire year. 
But you know, if you are doing your water holes for the first time, you know, it's a good time to get them established. But if you already have them established, definitely think about uh, getting those things refilled. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's getting real close to deer season. Um, you know, if you're able to take the youth out, uh, you know, throughout this, uh, keep, you know, this your season here. Um, you know, uh, I highly recommend it. You know, it's it's a good good deal for you as well as for them and the future of our uh, conservation and the hunting. Um, so we'll uh, leave you guys at that. Um, hopefully you guys are staying safe and like always, best luck on your guys upcoming hunting and fishing season.